You know I'm back, like I never left. I never left. Another sprint, another step, another step, another day, another breath. Another breath. Been chasing dreams, but I never slept. I never slept. I got a new attitude that'll lease on life as a piece of my seeking a find I can sleep when I die. Want a piece of the pie, got the keys to the ride, and I'm straight. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Get up my way. Well, after the football and the warm-ups, Ben's been straight in the nets facing the sidearm. He's been doing it for about 25 minutes still going. What have you picked up in what he's doing? The intensity of it. There was no messing around from the very first ball that Phil Neal chucked down with that device that they throw the ball down with now. There was no easing into it. It's almost like first ball, you're out, you're out. There's no sort of, well, can I have a few drives, Phil, first, and then I'll have a few off the back foot. He's alternated his lengths, and he's played a variety of shots. And It's like he's working on that scoop shot. You noticed the other day on commentary where he's copied Josh Butler's movements at the crease. But he's not just asked the throwdown as to throw those and he's going to do it every single ball. Occasionally he just gets it out from nowhere, which is I think the way to go because that's how you're trying to replicate in a net what it's going to be like in a match. Um, how hard he hits the ball, how technically sound he is, you know, hits the ball in the V. And I think that's why he's working on these shots behind him as well. A little bit like Josh Butler, if you're captaining against Stokes and he's hitting it and drilling it back past you, all that field has to go that way. And then if he starts scooping you, the field has to go back that way and you just don't have enough um, fielders. But how seriously he takes his practice. And everyone will say, well, you're playing for England, you should take it seriously. There's been no messing around. He's not as angry as he usually is, which means that he's having a really good net. He's got that, we've got that GoPro behind him and hopefully that might just show the speed of the game and the power of the game. Yeah, and that's my point about not easing in. They are, if Ben can just pan around a little bit from this angle, they're obviously not throwing off 22, they're throwing off about 18 or 19 because Ben doesn't want it coming out at 60, 70. Look how close they get to him and then they have that protection and Phil needs that protection because he hits it back so hard. So the speed at which they're coming down, now they tell us they can even throw slower balls with those machines, etc. The other thing I've noticed actually, and maybe we pick it up from the sideways camera when Ben, our cameraman Ben, goes sideways, is occasionally he really uses the depth in the crease. Ben Stokes comes at, like that, comes at the bowler, but occasionally he goes really far back in the crease as well. I'm gone. Things are just things, they don't make you who you are Can't pack up for you haul and take it with you when you're gone We posted on the porch, my family's glasses to the stars My grandma's smiling down on me like So from the nets, the other side of the stands, outside the ground They've come out here into the middle There are two nets out here in the middle of the Prima Dasa A seamer's net and a spinner's net Ben has paired up with Liam Plunkett Does it look more like match practice now to you? Yeah, I mean, a match practice, you're in the middle of where you're going to be batting tomorrow night, so you're getting used to ground dimensions. The pitches are going to be very similar, even the breeze, the lights, etc. But also the fact that they're alternating in a match, you're very rarely going to be on strike six deliveries in a row. Helps the bowlers as well. He's got Joe Root, Moeen Ali, Joe Denley bowling at home. You've got left hand, right hand, so they can switch from left hand to right hand. And also just switch on and off. I'll just go get this ball back. Go and get the ball. Hurry up. Throw it back. A terrible throw, sorry Mo. Um, so yeah, just to help switch on, switch off. Um, I've noticed with Ben, you know, Ben is a muscular hitter. When you see him bat in the nets against spin, and I'm this close up, I've never been this close up, he's actually quite wristy as well. He's not like a rigid, some of the Australians for example are quite rigid against spin. He actually uses his wrist pretty well to manoeuvre the ball. Um, it's a good, again, it's a very good net practice. Liam behind him, when Liam goes on strike, Ben being back, anywhere else this sort of sits at the back having a water, Ben tries to keep and he catches and he's been reviewing, he just can't keep him out of the game to be honest. Hey! I know we're focusing very much on, on Ben, but what have you made of the, the whole, the practice as a whole? Very individual I'd have to say, I mean that's what amazes me about Ben, what we've we been here an hour and a half and he's batted an hour and twenty. Remember our day, you were queuing up for the net, you batted 15 minutes and Mark Ramprakash or Graham Thorpe or Alex Stewart or whoever, the bowlers, whoever, be saying, all right, now, it's all right, Wardy, that's enough, out you come. I'm trying to work out how Ben Stokes manages to get an hour and 20 in the net um, and no, no one else seems to care. I think that's a good team ethic, really. Maybe it's because they got three, four nets, so many people now involved, you've got people who can throw their net bowlers, etc. Maybe it's just a few of the lads that said, look, 
we've had enough. It's a, it's a long tour, as in there's been a lot going on. Let's just, tonight is an easy night and we, we won't hit it too hard. He's hitting it very hard. You haven't fielded or bowled yet. Come on, let's go. So he's just had a bowl in the nets, he's just started a rain, so he's going to try and get some catches in. I mean, he was straight from batting, straight into it with his bowling. Yeah, slightly different with his bowling. Batting, he went on 100% intensity from ball one. Bowling, physically, because he's had problems, even though he'd batted for an hour and a half, he eased into it, definitely. Then he got one of the support staff to actually measure out, with a tape measure, exactly his run-up. Remember, he's had no ball problems in the past, his first test wicket. Brad Adam wasn't a test wicket because he overstepped, so he was meticulous about that. He bowled for quite a while, got it through at good pace, working on that new action of his, working on his body positions, and now straight, even though the storm, again, is really above us and all around us and the rain's coming down and other guys are sort of hurrying to get in Stokes is doing some more the only thing is he shouted over to uh, Paul Farbrace can you collect my batting gear and make sure it doesn't get wet but here you go full on his fielding I'll tell you something I notice about his fielding all the time he does it full on he never eases into anything with fielding his throwing arm is all of their throwing arms but his in particular is bullet like here's that run out the other day where he got it absolutely straight over the top and Joss took the bales off I think it is very important something that this side has learned and Owen Morgan has learned from Brendan McCullen and the New Zealand side they do their fielding a hundred percent there is no easing into your fielding and in fact it's the one thing that Trevor Bayliss does get a little bit cross about he's very calm about batting very cross calm about bowling but he gets very cross about fielding. Have you noticed how the balls are getting closer and closer to us yeah. as Bayliss is just trying to get the, them to go over <laughs> the head of Ben, the cameraman, and then back over his head? He's got a sense of humour, haven't he? No, <laughs> he's an Australian. <laughs> <laughs> but it has been, it's been fascinating watch. The mall train tonight, but in, in particular Stokes, he, uh, he has really thrown himself into this training session. Ben, you're straight off the training ground. How did that go tonight? Yeah, it was good. Um, it's quite tough because obviously how hot it is. Um, you know, if you bat for long periods of time, you sweat and uh, you go through a few changes of gloves, but it's nothing like you don't expect out in the middle. So um, in terms of trying to make it as real as possible in the game, um, I think you really get the benefit from that, from the training we do here. When you turn up, when you're coming to the ground to train, are you thinking about what you want to get out of the session? Yeah, I mean, I, um, every training session, uh, I think everyone does that. Um, you know, we've got a good structure in terms of how we operate our training. Um, you know, I think you know, obviously Fabi runs the sessions and, and plans everything and um, he gets me batting first and then asks me if I want a ball, um, depending on sort of my workloads that I've been. I mean, recently it's just been training overs so because um, we haven't managed to, to play that many games here. So um, it's probably the most I've bowled in a while in training as I haven't got that workload in games. But, um, you know, if you try and take the positives from it, it's a good um, sort of build up towards the test series. Against the sidearms, you look like you're messing around trying to find a few things. What are you working on with your batting? Yeah, it's just trying to, you know, always um, sort of trying to get better and, um, you know, figure out if there's anything else that I can add to my game. Um, one person I watch quite carefully and also who I bat quite a lot, with, uh, a lot with, which is quite lucky, is Joss. And obviously we know what he can do. And so I watch certain things that he does when he trains. And, um, you know, there's, you know, I've been working on the, on the ramp shop for quite a long time now. So um, I thought it was a good opportunity to get out in the middle the other day. And, um, you know, I've been working on that for ages. So it's good when something that you've worked on so hard pays off so just trying to you know add more things to my game and then when you come out and bat in the middle and the two nets are actually on the around the pitch is that more match practice oh uh, i think you know i try and get um most of my specific drills done against the side arm um because you know against bowlers it's it, sort of you get one bowler then another then another then another so you don't really get into a rhythm like you do out in the middle so that's what i try and do um, against the side arm and you know it's just extra practice you know batting against our guys as well who are obviously the best in the country so you know you're always getting challenged and you know then you try and take things that you're working on against the best guys in the world or in England. You can't do anything at less than 100% can you you're watching everything you did even the football? Yeah football's a big part of this group at the moment um, you know it, it gets us all going and um, 
gets the competitive juices going. Uh, especially, you know, if you're a bit stiff and sore on, on certain days, you know we've got football coming up and it gets all the lads going again. So, yeah, it's one of those things that we all look forward to. I, we, we, people say that we're, cricketers with the, uh, we're footballers with a cricketing problem. <laughs> and why did you only go for a million pound then in that thing and Butler went for 35 or so million? Absolute conspiracy theory, I'm sure of it. Two Currens went for more than me, so <laughs> <laughs> they don't know if they're left or right-footed. You've obviously missed some time away from cricket. We won't go anywhere into that sort of stuff, but does it make you doubly determined to make the most of when you're on the field, either as practice or in a game? Yeah, I mean, you know, you always you you always do that. You know, you're representing your country, you're playing at the highest level possible in um, in a career that you chose to do. So, you know, you can never take anything for granted. It can go away as quickly as it came to you. So, even though I've been a mass, uh, a, you know, been a part of it for quite a long time now, you know. Who knows where you will be in six months' time? And you know, if, if things don't go very well, then I'm not going to look back and say I didn't try hard enough. Well, we appreciate you letting us stick cameras in your face at practice. Thank you. No worries. Cheers, Wardy.